For me personally, the Turkey Prince has always been one of the primary sources of my inspiration from Rabbi Nachman, so much so that uh, uh, over 25 years ago I wrote an entire book based upon this one very graphic parable about the poor little son of the king who, when out of his mind, felt compelled to strip off all his clothes and sit under the royal table eating nothing but crumbs and bones. And obviously the king was very distraught that his uh, crazy son brought psychologists, psychiatrists, therapists and everything else, attention deficit disorder, all the rest of it, and nothing helped. Until the wise man comes and says, I can cure your son. And the wise man does the ultimate in empathy and takes off all his clothes and sits next to the little boy who eyes him suspiciously until uh, he says, well, who are you? And the wise man says, who are you? Well, I'm a turkey. Well, so am I. And they get to be friends. And uh, the wise man, as they develop their friendship, he gives a sudden signal and uh, has the... Uh, have, has shirts dropped down under the table and he takes a shirt, puts it on and the prince says, you're a turkey. How can you put on a shirt? He says, no, it's okay. You know, you can be a turkey and wear a shirt. So they get back to being friends and then the wise man gives another signal, trousers are put down and the uh, wise man puts on trousers. What are you doing? You're a turkey. No, you can wear pants and still be uh, a turkey. It's okay until step by step the wise man actually lifts the prince back to his true status at the royal table. Uh, amazingly uh, profound parable, one of many that Rabbi Nachman perhaps knocked off. Uh, there are probably, uh, if not uh, dozens and uh, maybe even uh, hundreds of such little uh, parables, but this one is particularly amazing because it goes right to the heart of the human predicament in this world. Where we are royal souls, creations of the Almighty, but each one of us is dumped down somewhere in the little corner we find ourselves, and how on earth do you get up? And many people have amazing dreams and visions about what they'd like to be and what they'd like to accomplish. But unless you have the secret of how to accomplish something, then you won't get them. There will remain dreams and fantasies. And Rebbe Nachman gives us, encapsulated in this very short, simple story, wisdom for the whole of life about how you accomplish something. The wise man doesn't try to dress the prince and force him up to the table. He says, I have a goal, a very complex goal. He's got to play his role in the court. He's got to be wearing the right clothes and eat the right food and make the right conversations. But we will never accomplish all of that in one go. We have to break the ultimate goal into little segments and we will accomplish them one by one and say, it's okay, don't freak out. You can carry on being who you are and just take on another mitzvah. A little more beautification of your Shabbat. Uh, half an hour spent each week studying the weekly portion. A few laws, a few halachot uh, every day. And by little incremental steps, you gradually transform your entire life. And this is our predicament in this world. We are like these turkeys. We're full of materialistic uh, desires and uh, we have all the obstacles pulling us away from who we should be. But the wise man strips off everything and says straight out, this is how you achieve things. Now, in Rabbi Nachman's Torah discourses, we can find passages where he explains in great depth with all of the Kabbalistic wisdom, how this is the way that creation unfolds. There is a goal and it unfolds step by step. But the genius of Reb Nachman is to create this, this uh, graphic picture of this little kid who's pulled off his clothes and is crawling around at the table and the distraught father and the, 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 the other people around. And he tells us in this very simple, direct way, this is how you succeed in life. And it really is. It's been such an inspiration for me, and it's uh, many times with the Reb Nachman story, you hear the story and uh, you think, okay, that's a, a nice little story, it's a little weird, whoever heard of a prince who thought he was a turkey? 
but uh, sometimes it's like a seed that has to go into the soil and it takes time for the seed to actually germinate and then maybe six months later or two years later or ten years suddenly you get it the scales fall off your eyes and you see what the Rebbe was actually saying in this story how he was actually in the story giving you an insight into yourself and the workings of yourself because there's two sides to this story there's the the, the prince and the wise man and they actually both of them sit inside of us the we are simultaneously the turkey and the wise man and we have to learn how to set up a dialogue between our mind and our intellect and our heart with all of its uh, it's, uh, it's running and dancing, and when we can get the two interacting together, then we have a recipe for success. Without doubt, one of the directions for interpretation of the story of the Turkey Prince is that it is mirroring a person's own internal situation. But simply taking the story at surface, at its surface meaning of the relationship between a very a troubled little child and a very wise therapist we see here tremendous insight for the teaching the therapeutic and the parental relationship the wise man shows us how when you really want to communicate with somebody who is it can only be said on a lower level than himself or herself they have to strip off all of the wisdom and sophistication and the ideas and the highfalutin talk and go right down to the level of the person, be it your child, a friend, a pupil, a student, a patient. You always have to project yourself into the mind and the situation of that person. And you have to make it easy and direct for them. You cannot give them goals that they will not be able to accomplish at one go. You have to have the wisdom to be satisfied that you cannot rush the healing process, the educational process, the, uh, the therapeutic process. It has to go at its own organic rate according to the individual in question. And that is a, 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 a tremendous teaching for the rabbi, therapist, teacher, parent, that they have to strip off what they are and project into the... You have to be both at once, like the wise man in the story. The wise man is at the same time with the prince, but sufficiently detached. He's always able to see ahead and see what is now needed. So this story has implications not only for a person's own individual process, but for all of our communities communication, it has application in the workplace and the office, in training and all kinds of applications.